In this episode, we take a look at my favorite pocket knives that we tested out and reviewed in 2018. Well, hey folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. We are at it again end of year videos, these type of videos, and we have one on pocket knives, one on fixed blades coming up real soon, and one on gear. This is kind of the best of list for the year. Now we test out a lot of gear here, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at all of the pocket knives that we've tested out and reviewed this year that really stand up and stand out to me. Now we've tested out and checked out a lot of really good stuff, but I want to show you the best of the best, the cream of the crop, the stuff that has just blown me away. And I've gone, man, these knives are just epic and amazing. So that's what's in this list. And it's only the products that we've tested and reviewed in 2018, not past years, just for this year. Sometimes you guys ask me, what about this pocket knife that was in the list from like a couple years ago? Well, that's in the list from a couple years ago. This is just for the gear and particularly the pocket knives that we reviewed for 2018 and which ones are the best of the best. Now in this video as well, we want to thank you for your support, not only just by watching and liking and subscribing and sharing this video, but also if any of these knives stand out to you and you're like, dude, I gotta get my hands on one, links below over to Amazon and Blade HQ where you can find the majority of these pocket knives at great deals and it helps us out. We get a small kickback when you use those hyperlinks and we can continue to make content and buy gear and test out and review just like you see in this video and in every video that we do here. So thank you for using those hyperlinks over to Blade HQ and Amazon throughout this video as we're taking a look at this list. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to it. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in with one of the only Spider Co's that we tested out this year, the Spider Co Sliver Axe. Now, this really connected with me because it is larger than most of the cutting edges on a lot of Spider Co pocket knives because most of them tend to have finger choils, most of them have to tend to have under three inches of cutting edge. This had over three inches of cutting edge, no finger twill to speak of. Very lightweight, has one of my favorite pocket clips that Spider Co uses with their loop over kind of paper clip design. Had a nice combination of carbon fiber and G10 handles, has their compression lock, has, I, from what I remember, an actual, uh, it looks like bronze bushings, but it's like bronze bushings encased in ball bearings. Cause I mean, it's like insanely butterly, butterly smooth. Uh, it has finger flipper as well as their famous thumb hole S30 V steel. So it's a very, very good blade. The only two things that were a little bit of a hang up for me was that the detent is a little weak, a little bit weaker than I would prefer. Still decent, but just not quite sucks in the blade and holds it in like some other spider codes that I own. And you are paying a pretty penny for a Taiwanese made knife at around $150 to $160. Again, Amazon Bleed HQ links below. So it's a little bit on the high end for form produced knives, but you get tons of value and tons of performance in all that they have put together in its capabilities. And so overall, it was very easy for me to add and start this list off with the Spyderco Sliver Axe. And if you like Spydercos and you're trying to wonder and trying to figure out what would be a great knife to take a look at, this thing it hits a lot of points for me and connects with me on many different levels. And it's my favorite Spyderco of 2018. Next up, I can't believe it took me this long to get my hands on one of these, but I was so glad when I did, is when I, in the beginning of the year, picked up and purchased the Buck 112 Ranger original design. Uh, now, I know they had some of the Slims and all that come out that we recently did, but I'm talking about the original and particularly the fact that they now offer them in so many different custom variations. Not only of handle scales with the wood inlays and bolsters that you can get in different designs, but also steel options and even blades shapes. They now have the classic clip as well as a drop point version out there. They have S30V. The one that I purchased was 5160 steel, which has performed very well for me. It was and just fell in love with it. I've never had a Ranger 112 prior to this year, 2018. And when I particularly added on a custom aftermarket uh, quick thumb stud and I got a pocket carry little pouch, I mean, it just took the cake as um, a knife that is compact, so I can carry it in a lot of different scenarios, carry it in my pocket if need be, my coin pocket and my most of my pants that have them, uh, and has a better edge retention than the 420 high carbon that is out there. 
and just a level of customization, just cool factor that when I bust that thing out, every time people are like, oh dude, is that like a buck? And then when they look at it, they're like, whoa, you know, and then you see the custom handle scales that I got that I just purchased on Amazon. There must be a, a factory thing from, from uh, what's it called? Uh, but but anyway, uh, and then the options in the steel, man, that thing, and it's it's a performer, man. I mean, the ergonomics are fantastic, very contoured, very full in the hand, and then the hollow grind with that clip point is just ridiculous. And regardless of going with the 110 or 112, particularly in some of those custom options that are available, I was super pleased, super happy, and absolutely made the list. And even in my opinion, blew out of the water both the 112 Slim because of some of the Pro that had some of the issues that we tested out, and even though the Slim itself, which I have right here, just the original, is a great knife, uh, the the uh, original Buck 112 is epic in every way and is a great item to have in the collection and makes our best list for 2018. Oh man, this one, I was so surprised and really regretted not getting my hands on a Hogue knife before. Taking a look at the EX, Zero, dash zero three series. Now they have many different sizes, combinations, Tanto, uh, drop point, auto, you can get auto versions of both the three and a half and the four inch versions or manual. And for usually you can find them for under, right around a hundred to like $120. You're getting uh, one USA made, 154 cm steel you get a lot of options a lot of capability and uh, was just super impressed plunge lock design because of originally being an auto that you can still get or you can get a manual depending on where you live or just what your preference is uh man the ergonomics is great the plunge lock is strong the blade shape very like a tough definitely more heavy duty tactical feeling folder regardless if we go with the three and a half or the four inch versions but man both of them are very impressive to me really put a hogue on the map for, uh, for pocket knives for me. I never tested out a pocket knife prior to that. It was just very, very impressed. Really the only downside being that they're only for righties. They don't have a pocket clip option at this time for lefties. Hopefully in the future they will uh, tweak that design and give that as an option. But if you're right-handed and you're interested in a US knife that's not gonna break the bank uh, and has a lot of features and gives a lot of options, man, the Hogue EX-03 series is mind blowing and highly recommended and was one of the best pocket knives that I tested out and reviewed this year. Next up, man, uh, this has just a, a, such an iconic feel to me and overall I think CRKT did a great job because for me, when I first really actually started to pay attention to pocket knives, started to carry pocket knives, the M16 series was one of the very first ones that I purchased, carried it for several years and really loved it. And uh, as time went on, you know, matured, went through different phases and started the channel and, you know, got into tons and tons of knives. And uh, what, two of the things in the original design that really kind of was a hang up for me is that I believe it only had tip down as an option for the carry and then it had that um, extra safety lock and it just was, did not connect with me over time as I grew and matured in my desires for um, pocket knives. Well, CRKT kind of went back to the drawing board, tweaked that design, and I, I'm really impressed with what they did for the price, usually around $40. Um, but what they did was they made these frame lock, uh, they removed that secondary auto feature, auto locking, it was like a dual locking system, uh, and they have added multiple uh, pocket clip attachments for all, all sorts of different angles and directions, which is awesome. And they upgraded the steel to uh, Sandvik 12, C27. Um, so that that I believe is a little bit of an upgrade over what they were using before, which I believe was 8CR13 MOV or 8CR14. And I just like that steel and it, it has performed well for me over the years, and particularly in that budget friendly arena. It uh, just has a better name attached to it, in my opinion. And uh, going to again, frame lock, removing that secondary auto feature, locking feature was awesome. So very impressive. So it was, it was very like nostalgic when CRKT released this. Uh, I believe it was at the beginning of the year because that's when I picked them up is early 2018 um, and really the only downside that I saw was that the um, frame lock was flush with the rest of the body so you really got to kind of get your thumb in between the gap to disengage the the frame lock but it's a very strong frame lock and just a really cool fun blade and very iconic and very nostalgic for me so I love having it in the collection and it's a great um, kind of uh, more of a tactical feel 
but uh, not gonna break the bank. We're gonna give you a lot of options now and not have all kind of the silly gimmicks that the old versions I felt had. So check those M series, M16, I believe M21 as well, uh, uh, series from CRKT. Their new updated versions are awesome and a great little pocket knife setup and series. Okay, we're about middle of the road here uh, in the video. We should be nearing the halfway point. And uh, I do just wanna take a brief moment and just remind you guys also, not only the Blade HQ and Amazon uh, hyperlinks, but also our backcountry.com hyperlinks, as well as our Knockaround sunglass hyperlinks. Those links as well, if you're looking for great sunglasses for the whole family, Knockaround has great performers for the whole family, as well as uh, backcountry.com has apparel, has tents, knives, uh, all sorts of different gear that we test out here at the channel. It's just giving you another opportunity and a different avenue um, to purchase gear and sometimes gear that's not easily available on Amazon and uh, backcountry.com often has uh, better prices and they have sales all the time and discounts and stuff. So a uh, great uh, organization to check out through the hyperlinks and will help us to continue to do what we do because we'll get that small kickback when you use Knockaround or Backcountry as well as Blade HQ or Amazon. So thank you guys for your continued support week in, week out. When you think of something that you want to purchase by using our hyperlinks. All right, so next up is an auto. Man, lots of autos. I checked out, I think, three maybe this year that we tested out. Um, and of them, the one, and just as in general, the one that was just like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, William Wallace's Claymore in your pocket is the Gerber 06 Auto or Auto 06. This is a mind boggling knife. I wasn't quite sure when I was reading the specs and looking at it, I'm like, man, is that just like I'm gonna be a brick and just like the, the ridiculous in the pocket? I kind of, but it's also like, Awesome. Uh, Gerber really has outdone themselves with this design, giving you S30V steel, which is a great steel. Gerber does a great job with it. Great relief edge, saber grind, just a great blade shape for every task. They do also have serrated and tanto versions that are available as well. Lots of different color combinations. So the blade itself is a great performer, all USA made. Then you got that auto feature, which is super strong, like huge plunge lock, um, safety feature as well. So it's giving you that option very good for like a quick deploying blade and then the handle being aluminum with steel liners coming in I believe at over six ounces so I mean it's like the weight of a small fixed blade but man is it almost as strong in every way except for just the joint itself uh, in a fixed blade I mean the handle is extremely ergonomic I was really surprised uh, and is just so solid and would be a great hard use knife if you're looking for a pocket knife and you want it to be auto and super hard use super durable, tough, but just a good performer in USA made and backed by Gerber's great warranty. I've used it before and it, they are really good back up their stuff. Um, I, I, I love it. And man, it, it, it's so awesome. And I, I enjoy <laughs> carrying it on, on a surprisingly regular basis. It's one of my uh, more favorite autos in the collection. Now it will cost you a pretty penny anywhere between, eh, uh, the manual version, because there is a manual version, you can actually sometimes find for about 120, 130, but the auto version usually is gonna run you about 170 to 200, just depends on who, what, when, where, why, color combinations, all that. So it is gonna cost you, and to my knowledge, it's only right-handed available. So righties only on this one. Those would be the only two things that you have to consider, but man, the price, for what you're getting, I mean, it is a monster blade and it's super strong, super durable, uh, and it's just a beast to carry and to use. And just, I, I feel like I am William Wallace and the British are charging me and I'm gonna whip out this pocket knife and I'm gonna be able to take out the horses and the soul and the knights and everything with this pocket knife and uh, w win the day. So uh, awesome, awesome pocket knife. And uh, in general, regardless if we go with manual or auto and uh, it was my favorite auto of the year. So this one super surprised me as well. It's the Rookie or Rake, depends on who says it and how or whatever, uh, uh, P801. For about 30 to $35, you're getting a frame lock stainless steel blade, deep ride pocket clip on ball bearing bushings with Samvik 14C 28N steel and a full flat grind flipper option 
man, does this have so much going for it. It's really mind boggling and to me, really sets a precedent for a lot of budget friendly pocket knives because it's solid as a rock. It has so many capabilities. It has a good steel on it, better than 8CR, better than OS 8, uh, better than, I would prefer it over an even 9CR if I had a choice if you're like, hey, Samvic 14C 28N or eight, 9CR, uh, 18 MOV, I would go with the Sandvik. And uh, the blade shape is just a great, great performer, super buttery smooth with that strong frame lock uh, and a good detent. I mean, this is a great gift pocket knife, great gift item in general, great to have in the collection, uh, and very minimal things, uh, really being only that it's right-handed again, only. So lefties, you're kind of out of luck there. Um, and, but that's about it. And, and Rake has so many other great options if you're a lefty that you could take a look at. But for the price point of about $30 for um, their, I believe, stone wash version, and they have like an acid wash that I have that I paid like $32 for mind-boggling it's backed by phoenix you know phoenix and uh rake are owned by our like conglomerates so you know it's not just some no-name uh, chinese blade that you've never heard of before and you're like who the heck is this it's owned by the company that we know very well uh, phoenix flashlights which make great gear so uh yeah Love it. The P0801 from Rake or Rookie really blew my mind this year and set a precedent for budget friendly pocket knives. Finally, a ZT pocket knife I was excited to own and keep in the collection and carry. The ZT0566. This guy, uh, made by Rick Hinderer is the, the the designer and he's made a lot of great stuff you know he's designed the cryo and cryo 2 for kershaw um but the thing for me is that in the past i've never really been a zt pocket knife guy it's either the prices are just so expensive that i'm like eh for that price of over 200 dollars, do i really want to spend that or do i just want to spend like 180 on a really good bench made um or they were just too big. You know, they're just too beefy, too heavy, just didn't connect with me. Or they, I had one version that I was having centering issues. I had went through a couple of them where the ergonomics just didn't feel great. So I've just always seemed to have an issue for one reason or another with ZT knives. But this one finally I connected with and I was like, man, this has put ZT back on the map for me. Not only does it have a great blade steel, I believe my version has the S35VN, which I absolutely love. I had great ergonomics, frame lock, with the over travel stop, uh, flipper, it's open assisted, uh, lots of capability. And I think I paid like 140, 150 for it. Right around the $150 price point, you're getting a great knife. And for a ZT on the lighter end at about 5.4 ounces. So it is on the lighter side of a lot of ZT knives out there. And it is the frame lock, not a liner lock like some of the other ones. So um, really cool. And it just really fits a niche for me of not only giving performance, but size and weight class. So I was really excited about the 0566 and has definitely put ZT back on the map for me. And I have, I'm looking at a few other ones that I want to pick up now because of this, because we're in the past, I would see a ZT knife and just be like, eh, I'm good. Now I'm like, okay, well, wait a second. That one was good. So what else is out there that ZT is producing? All right, we're coming to the end. Second to last here on the list is the SOG uh, Terminus XR. Now the Terminus was actually a design that they came out with that was like a tactical slip joint and I was actually really impressed. They did a really good job with that design but I was hoping that they would come out with something that would be good for those who are able to own and have locking mechanisms on their pocket knives. Well, guess what? They absolutely did that. And I have to say that I believe SOG did an amazing job with the SOG Terminus XR. Now, XR is their new locking mechanism because recently the patent expired on the Axis lock from Benchmade. So many companies now, I know Hogue with H&K has produced one. Uh, SOG is now gonna start using them that are very similar and I'm sure you'll see more as time goes on knives that have very similar locking mechanisms to an axis lock uh, and that's what the xr is what they call it the sog version but you're getting a bdz1 steel which is a decent steel it's not mind-blowing but i prefer it over some other ones out there particularly sogs os 8 when i put it up against the sog os 8 i prefer the um 
a BDZ-1 steel. It has a great blade shape. It has a flipper as well as thumb studs. It has, again, that um, locking mechanism that's really nice. It has carbon fiber G10. Uh, it's going to have a loop over pocket clip ambidextrous. So it's a completely ambidextrous pocket knife. I was impressed with the grind angles, with the performance, and for about $70, which is what they're going for. You don't have to break the bank if a Benchmade is just out of your price range. If you're like, I like the idea of maybe like a mini barrage or mini griptilian, but I don't know if I have $120, $150 to spend, depending on the version that you're looking at. Well, now you can spend a little bit less because it is foreign produced, Chinese produced, uh, but SOG is a US company. And you know, I believe it's, it's a lot of their stuff is like, the parts are there and then they put them together in the US. I don't know if that's that one or not. But anyway, just really set the precedent for me, put SOG back on the map because in recent years, I felt like SOG's kind of going like this. So it kind of brought it back up for me and really has a lot of great features. It's a great pocket knife. I hear, I've hear i heard from the comments, many of you purchased them and you were like, dude, this is one of my favorite new new pocket knives. So I'm, gl I'm glad I'm not alone in that and is absolutely making the list for 2018's best pocket knives, the SOG Terminus XR. And finally, last but definitely not least is the Benchmade Mini Crooked River. This knife, and just now since I got the Mini, the Crooked River series, regardless of which size you wish to go with, is one of the most, I don't know what word to use. Epic is too used a word, I don't know. Just amazing because it's giving me an insane level of performance, S30V steel, axis lock, um, as well as a cool blade shape, size options now, four inch or three and a quarter inch, I believe, three and a half, can't remember the blade length off the top of my head for this mini, which I own. Uh, and then they have the aluminum with the dye wood and the orange and the color combinations. And oh my gosh, it's just like loving it. But a bum, I'm loving it how much I love the mini Crooked River from Benchmade. And when I'm wanting to be styling, you know, if it's like, uh, here's an example, like it's Thanksgiving and I'm gonna go over it with my family and I gotta pick a pocket knife, uh, it's gonna be the mini Crooked River from Benchmade because it just has that just cool factor. And when I bust that thing out, people are like, Duh, dude, let me see that nut. Oh my God, dude, how much is this nut? Dude, this thing is so sick. And yeah, it's gonna cost you, you know, it's about 180, 190 on average, and about 200 for the full size. Um, but, but you can go over to the Benchmade website as well and make custom ones, which is super cool. Um, but man, is it so worth it? I do wish that they didn't use the dumb arrow pocket clip. Uh, it would've been nice to see a loop over. I will have to do an aftermarket deep ride pocket clip uh, later on on the design. That's really it, guys. I mean, the, the thing is just so cool. So, so cool. And if you were of the whole list, gonna go, dude, if we scrape all of them, what is one knife to throw my hard earned money at? It's gonna be the Crooked River series, mini or full size, depending on which one you prefer. Just blew my mind this year. Top of the line, top of the top the pinnacle of our list of the best pocket knives that we've tested and reviewed of 2018. So thank you guys so much for coming over here, checking out the channel. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, check again, all those links below helps us out. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, um, social media, throwing up stuff there all the time. Week in, week out, we're cranking out reviews, giving you guys content, always wanting to point you in the right direction so that you guys know how to spend your hard earned money. Cause I want you guys to always, when you watch a video to go, okay, that is exactly what I needed or no way dude that is not what i needed thank you for telling me that that data point is what i needed to hear and now i don't want that product or that's the data point i needed and now i must have it that's what i always want to do here at the channel and uh, we're just so thankful don't forget also about the mailbag put hashtag mailbag you might get a question answered in an upcoming video don't forget about the gideon's tactical show every saturday where we talk concepts ideas that's where we answer the mailbag often and uh, it's just a great time coming together and having a community together so finally guys always remember stay quick Equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.